everybody, welcome back to Taji's World of Books and welcome to another book recommendation video. Hey everybody, so welcome back and today I have got some more book recommendations for you. I'm really excited to talk about two different series. One series I'm going to talk about that's complete, that's a historical romance. Oh, what? Taji read a historical? Yes, I did. I did. So one's a historical. Another is, it's a full like nine books, I think. No, no, there's a, like 11 books in the series, but I'm really dividing them into two separate conversations and you'll see why I'm doing that in a minute. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so the first series that I want to talk about is a historical. I know I don't read historicals typically, but this one just, when you tell me that there's some kink and there's some BDSM, I'm like, I'll do it. I'll check it out. I'll see. And it delivered. And this is Scarlet Peckham. There are three books in the series. I don't know what the series is called. Oh, it's called Secrets of Charlotte Street. She made it easy for me. She put it on the front. So it's called Secrets of Charlotte Street. And the first one is The Duke I Tempted. And I absolutely loved this one. This is about Poppy and the Duke of Westmead. And boy, this is a marriage of convenience. It is a, there's like a trauma history as well. There is, this is an enemies to lovers type situation. There is a secret club where their members are kinksters and master slave, BDSM, dom situation. And the Duke of Westmead has a secret. And his secret is that he likes to visit his dominatrix and he likes to have his ass handed to him like literally like he wants like you know because he basically it started off I think in a way for him to to feel something after a tragic event happened to him and he couldn't feel anymore after this event happened and so he wanted to feel something and so he would go in and visit her and that was when she made him bleed through you know their sessions that's when he actually started to feel something and so that's I think how it started but then he absolutely loved it and wanted to do more of it but obviously because we're in 17th 18th century England in nobilish no noble society that is not gonna fly and so it had to be secret and so to be a member of this secret society you have to pay dues to support the society as well as you get a secret key and then you have to keep it secret so that's the premise of the club so now Poppy's situation is Poppy is an ambitious, self-taught botanist. She loves all things plants, but the problem with Poppy is that she's not royalty, she's not wealthy, she's a commoner, she is constantly disheveled and looking a mess because she's constantly digging in the earth and constantly working with her hands, but she does what she loves. And she comes to the Duke of Westmead's home to work on you know his garden and to bring his garden to life and as these stories go it's time for him to basically find a wife and he feels like you know as he's looking at the tom and trying to decide who he's going to choose upon he actually finds that he really likes poppy and he thinks that they could make it work for the both of them they actually are put into a compromising situation and he's not going to leave her compromised and so it is a marriage of convenience and it's about their story and how they um, develop relationships and feelings for one another she learns that the tragedy that happened to Duke, the Duke of Westmead is that his wife and child had passed away 13 years earlier and she also has some significant trauma so it's also it's really about being vulnerable in front of your lover and allowing your lover to see you for who you really are and hoping that they accept you now the thing that I love about Scarlett Peckham's writing is that she takes you to the 13th hour she takes it all the way to the end like you don't know if they're gonna figure it out or not and if you haven't read about these books then you don't know if these are companion novels or if the next book is about a continuation of this couple and are they gonna get their HEA what I do like about this series is that you do see all of the couples in previous or er, er, in subsequent books so we get to see how things are faring with them and how things go but this was really really good this was angsty I gave it a five angst I gave it a spice of a four because it gets spicy okay really really spicy and I gave it an overall five really good this is the best book I think in this in this series it's really it really delivered in a lot of ways the next book in the series is The Earl I Ruined, and this is about the Duke of Westmead's sister, Lady Constance, and they sort of set it up for you in that book as well. Lady Constance is a busybody. 
she's a meddlesome person she gets up in everybody's business and she thinks that she knows what's going on and because she is meddling in things she causes a lot of drama and her brother has warned her time and time again stay out of people's affairs you don't know what's going on behind closed door because she was meddlesome in this book as well and it worked out and she says well it worked out fine when I did blah 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 he's like barely barely you need to like mind your own business and stay out of people's stuff and does she listen no hence the Earl I ruined so it's her story and it's with Julian Haywood and he is on the cusp of proving himself to be the man that he always wanted to be when his absolute future is destroyed in a very public way and so this is what Constance does to try to fix this situation so this is an enemies to lovers it's a marriage of convenience and it's a fake dating trope and it's really really good so it's not as good as the first book, like I said. So I gave it an angst of a three, I gave it an overall 3.75, and I gave it a spice of a two. And the final book in the series is The Earl I Left, and this is about Lieutenant Lord Henry Evesman. And Lord Henry Evesman is a, it, it, he almost read to me to be like a Protestant preacher, if you will, and he is going to try to reform you know prostitution and try to reform people's ideas about women that work in the sex industry and in the BDSM industry and so he comes upon that secret club that I talked about that everybody belongs to and he meets Alice and Alice walks him around and shows him the club and you know he wants to write a paper to the House of Parliament to try to say like women that work in these establish establishments need protection they need you know doctor care they need there's other like sort of social things that are necessary in order to keep these women safe and obviously in this society they don't believe that and they don't think that this is important and they don't think that prostitution should be supported in any way and so it, this is basically his story with Alice and Alice is everything that Henry is not Alice is what you would have considered during that time a loose woman she curses like a sailor Henry is a this is a, a Henry is a, a virgin hero and but he is so yummy and so scrumptious and so wonderful and so cinnamon roll that you can't you just can't help it but love him to death now the thing that problem that I had with this book that I really didn't like is she's working as a dominatrix and a prostitute in a house of ill repute in the 1800s and they never it ended on an HEA but they and he is like you know a, a, a preacher how is that gonna work like how are they going to be in a relationship together and be married and her continue to do that work I, I, I guess I struggled with that a little bit so like I can suspend belief because I can you can be a dominatrix right and like having a relationship with your partner where you know you go in you perform your duties you do you know and it's very clinical and it's not a thing but you have like a very closed relationship with your partner and that works but that wasn't this and so I just got hung up on that because they didn't really address it like it, it was I felt like this book was very much about Alice saying Henry you have to accept me for who I am yes he does because that's her work that's what she does she's not gonna change it okay but she didn't really accept him and I didn't I mean I guess she did accept the fact that he was a preacher she knows that but she did they didn't really explain like logistically we can accept each other we can love each other but how are we going to face society and what is that going to look like with the societal constraints that are put on us and are you going to be able to continue to be a preacher are you going to have a flock is anybody going to come to your church when they know that I'm working in this home and that I'm continuing to do this kind of work and they never addressed whether or not she was just a dominatrix and she only did because in certain circumstances a dominatrix doesn't have sexual intercourse with their clients like they can just you know perform you know the paddling or flogging or whatever the kink is that the person needs with that person and have no sexual intimacy whatsoever it didn't sound like this was that and at 17 18th century it doesn't sound like it's that evolved so I don't know maybe I'm thinking more about it than I needed to but I guess I was I had difficulty suspending belief with this particular one I liked the story it was angsty and he gave up his entire family to be with her like he's not gonna talk to his brother he's not gonna talk to his father he can't you know during that time because his father said that um, he had to leave the home that he's not gonna see his mother he's not gonna see his sister and I'm just 
it, it just seemed like a lot. So for that, I gave it a three. The spice, there was no spice in here at all because they, they, they hooked up like once towards the very end of the book and it wasn't even anything. So I gave it a one and the angst was like a three. So this was my least favorite book in the series. Take it for what it's worth. Now, I do believe that Scarlett Peckham is still writing in this particular series, and I believe that there will be another book that'll come out in the future, although I don't know when that will be. So stay tuned if that's something that you are interested in, and I think you should go over to our website and check it out. Okay, so the next series that I want to talk about, and I do not hear enough people talking about this series. I don't know why, because it is so damn good. It is really, really good. For me, it ranks up there with J.R. Ward, Black Dagger Brotherhood, Sherilyn Kenyon's The, the Dark Series. Um, it ranks up there with Jennifer L. Armitrout's series. It ranks up there with um, any of those other paranormal authors that we have come to know and love, Cressley Cole, it's not quite as good as Cressley Cole, let me back up, it's good, Cressley Cole is like another level, I'm just saying, anyway, <laughs> I'm like all over the place today, so this is Karen Marie Moaning, and this is her Fever series, right, and I, it's been on my shelf for a while, and I'm cleaning out my shelves, and I'm getting close to like getting down to, I probably have like 15 book boxes down there of books that I'm unhauling, so if you guys are interested in seeing an unhaul, like let me know, I will totally film that, like because I'm trying to clear out the shelves and get rid of the fluff, and like only get down to the stuff I really want to read, but I digress, back to this, Dark Fever is, huh, this is a complicated series to explain. So I'm going to give you just a brief synopsis overall, and then we'll go into sort of each book. And each book progressively gets better. And I'm going to say that I'm going to talk about the first five books in the series because that five books follows three main characters, which is a significant love triangle. And you're trying to figure out what the hell is going on. And by that fifth and fifth book, it's resolved and we know, and then it sort of then follows, it's the end of this sort of saga, and it starts to follow other characters, even though we see these characters later on. So that's why I'm dividing it into two separate things, because this first five, you were like, the angst is a five. Like, you were all in, trying to figure out who's doing what to whom, under what circumstances, and what's going on with this love triangle, and who's she going to go with, and what's happening. And you were just like, you don't know, because it, it, it I'm not going to say that it's a romance because different books are filed under different things. Some books are filed under romantic suspense. Some are filed under paranormal. Some are filed under fantasy. So it crosses the gap between fantasy, romantic suspense, romance, and paranormal. It covers the gamut. And so here's what this series is about. There is a main character named Michaela, and they call her Max. Max's sister has gone to the UK specifically to has gone to Ireland and she is studying abroad when she gets a very ominous message. Mac gets a very ominous message from her sister saying something to the effect of, he fooled me, I loved him, I thought I could trust him, he's never going to let me leave the country, I'm in trouble. And the very next day when Mac is trying to get herself together to go and see what's going on with her sister, she gets a report from the Irish police that her sister's been found dead in an alley. And so she is hell-bent and determined on going back and finding out what happened to her sister. Okay, so then what we find in this particular world is that when she starts to go to Ireland, she learns about Irish fae and folklore and all of these different circumstances about mysticism, right, that her sister was entrenched in. So she learns that there is a wall between humans and fae, she learns that there is a Seelie and an Unseelie court, and the Unseelie are, in this particular world, are lethal, disgusting, and gross. And these books are one of the most graphically disgusting sort of views of, like, she talks about these creatures that have, like, eyes all over their body, and they have bulbous heads and mucus pus, and you're reading it, and the way she writes it, you're just like, ooh, that's so gross. But I haven't read something so descriptive that really I could see it. I, it could put me in it. Like, I was, I think I was, like, eating a sandwich, and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I was like, I, no, 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 no. And that, that's hard for an author to do, and so I think that she did a really great job. So then the Sealy Court are not as deadly, but don't don't sleep on them because the Sealy are ruthless, but they are gorgeous. They are what you would think of as an if an angel came down to earth and like donned his presence 
and they were that they're so gorgeous and so light filled and so beautiful and so breathtaking that you just you you couldn't you you would take your breath away. And so what happens is that the Sealy princes do this thing to women where before you know it, you are stripped naked and writhing in ecstasy, wanting them to take you. And if they take you under those circumstances, they can turn you into and I forget the terminology, but they can turn you into basically a priya. And the priya is basically a sex slave. They can turn you into a mindless sex slave that the only thing that you care about is sex and you will have sex with them until you die. They look at it as a great honor because you're mere puny humans and so you got to have sex with this immortal being and they took you to the best place of your life so why would you not want this? Not understanding that it takes away your free will and you don't, and as humans, one of the biggest things that we have is our free will and that's what we want to sustain. Okay, so she then, when Michaela is there trying to figure out what happened to her sister, she learns that she is what's called a, a, a she'd seer, right? And that means that she is can see through the glamour and she can see what these creatures really are, where the rest of the human race cannot. We don't see what's going on. She does. And she's from an ancient line of seers. And so is her sister. And that makes her highly coveted. So she's already in danger. She then goes into an antique bookstore and she meets this guy named Jericho Barron. And Jericho Barron, she asks questions and she learns from Jericho that there is a book called The Sinadu. And this book is has all the secrets of life, it has everything, and everybody is looking for this book. And the, the book, she knows about the book because the sister mentioned the book in the message, don't let him get the book. So here, Michaela teams up with Baron because she knows that Jericho can help her because he is an antiques dealer and he knows about this book and he knows where she can find it and so they go on an adventure together. They, and he also sort of educates her and teaches her about the Sealy and Unsealy court and all of the dangers that the Sealy and the Unsealy present and he tries to help her stay out of danger. They also meet this other character named Vlaine and Vlaine is, he is part of the Sealy Court. He is second in command to the queen of the Sealy Court. He is gorgeous and breathtaking and off starts the dynamic of the three of these two. They are vying for her attention, Jericho. Jericho doesn't really vie for her attention. Jericho just is Jericho. And Jericho is older and distinguished and handsome and gorgeous and dapper and debonair and just, whew, he just, just exudes sex, just exudes it, just by being in the room. Vlaine, on the other hand, is a Sealy Prince, and so he can turn up his, his magnetism. And so Vlaine has done situations to her where she stripped off her clothes, and he put a cloak around them, but she slipped off her clothes in the middle of a museum and is writhing and wanting him to enter her, and like and is like really pursuing her heavily but using his sealy powers to do it and so there's a lot of kind of questions about his ethical how ethical he is however Vlaine is come through in so so many ways and so Vlaine is always there so the love triangle and you're trying to figure out who's bad who's good what's the black zone what's the dead zone what's going on with the unsealy who's trying to take down the wards who is, who's evil, who's good, who's for, who's against. You never know what the heck is going on. And it is a constant twists and turns. And it's just all over the place, always. And you are on the edge of your seat from page one. So let me say, this is not the best book in the series, okay? It gets better if you stick with it. It gets better, 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 better. By the time you get to this fifth book that I'm going to talk about, it's off the chain. Off the freaking chain. So good. So this one I gave an overall 3.75. I gave it an angst of a 3. And the spice is like a 1 because it's not even there. Because we're, we're getting introduced to this world as we go. The next book in the series is Blood Fever. And this is a continuation of the story. It picks up exactly where that book leaves off. And we are learning more about, like I said, Mac, Vlaine, the Royal Fae, Jericho. We're learning more about the Sealy and Unsealy Courts. We're learning about these objects of power that she's able to detect and that they have to discover so that they can hear more about the story and know where things are going and where things are going to evolve. The th I think the thing that is constant in this book is that Vlaine wants something, Baron wants something, the plot thickens, 
and we more secrets are being revealed and you don't know who you can trust under what circumstance and she tries to get information out of Jericho and Jericho is just not giving up anything and that's part of the problem is that he just doesn't give up information and she's like I know you have it I know you know why won't you tell me but Blaine gives up information freely when she asks the right questions because he is Faye after all so Faye are gonna tell you but you got it they're gonna answer the question that you asked and if you wanted to know something different then you need to formulate the question in a different way to get different information so I'm just like mm, I don't know about you but good so this was a four angst a three and spice a one little more we're getting a little more but story still evolving Fay fever okay so this now has evolved there are monsters that are walking around in the streets of Dublin um, you're learning that everything that you once believed to be true is not true you are seeing definitely can see more of the Fae that are going on there are there are some suitors that are popping up like I said Baron Blaine Christian has popped into the mix so you're just like is what what's happening with Christian because he's showing that he has some interest Baron and Blaine hate each other they have a back history we don't know their back history we want to know what's going on with them and why do they hate each other other than the fact that they both are vying for max attention we don't know what Baron is we're trying to figure out what, what's going on with Baron and his secrets and this book does not end well it doesn't end well okay but you got to keep reading but what the way it ends you're just like what the hell just happened you were just like on the edge of your seat like you just it I'm telling you I don't know why people are not talking about these books these books are so damn good they are so so good and I know that they're older like they were written in early 2000 but they stand the test of time they are so good and so this one ended on this was overall a four angst a four and spice a two and like I said the way it ended you're like I gotta get to the next book because I gotta know what the hell is going on so then we get to dream fever Whew. she goes through some drama because there's just drama that happened and so we get another character um, her name is Danny and Danny is 13 14 years old she's gonna be more significant later on and so Danny is there um, Baron is there Vlaine is there and there's just angst 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 everywhere and I don't want to say what happens because it's gonna spoil it and there's just a lot and you need to read all the books before this to get into know what happened here but I'm telling you this is a five angst a four and spice a two and this book ends horribly so we're just like what is going on this is like the, the ante is being upped in every book that we read it's being upped up 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 there's more going on and more to be said about this and then we get to this chunker shadow fever and so shadow fever is we see that <laughs> I wrote Mac is a menace she is impulsive she is impetuous she's angry she just distrustful she has a right to be distrustful okay she has a right to be distrustful because everybody is lying because they had their own agenda and you don't know who to trust and you don't know how you can trust them why you should trust them if they're being honest if they have their own agenda and of course they do so as a result of everything that's happened she is absolutely evolved into this ruthless creature that creates problems sometimes of her own making because she refuses to listen to anybody you understand why but you're just like girl like settle down but there's a lot going on so everything is justified in my mind and we need to figure this out and there are twists and turns and plot twists and I wrote very fascinating it was outstanding this particular book I gave it an overall five I gave it angst of a five and a spice of a three and I'm gonna say at this point in the series because like I said there are 11 books in the series that I'm continuing to read this is sort of a wrap-up of this situation you get to it's a wrap-up of what's going on over here which is good because it was like it took you this many books in to know what the hell is really going on and then in the next video I'm gonna talk about the second half of the series and the second half of the series is taking things in a little bit of a different direction but still good nonetheless still really angsty still like captivating twists and turns fascinating if you have not read well first of all let me say if you have read any of Karen Marie Moaning's books please put it in the comments below and tell me what you read and what you thought about it and what you rated it because I will add it to my TBR because I know she's got a Highlander series as well and I think a couple of you have mentioned that you read the Highlander series so let me know what the rating is and if I'm interested I will go and check it out and if you haven't read these books like please allow 
some grace in here and hear my recommendation and hope that you think that it'll be interesting because I'm telling you this is like it ranks up there with some of the great paranormal authors that we read all the time and that we absolutely love she did a great job with this and I can't wait to finish the series and I think that the next video I, I'll do will hopefully wrap up the series so you can see for yourself and check it out if you think that you would be interested so you guys that is all that I have for today you guys know that I upload videos three times a week so hit that bell notification button so you can be notified every time I upload a new video and do me a favor and hit that like button because it helps me with the YouTube algorithm and you guys I'm so close to a thousand I'm so so close and I'm trying to inch 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 my way over there so please help me out and subscribe to the channel recommend the channel to your friends I would really really appreciate it I have the best viewers on the planet you guys are so sweet and so engaging and so fun and you're from all over the world and I just am so grateful that I have a platform and a space to be able to talk about the things that I love and that you guys want to hear about it and that you love what I'm talking about and so like they makes me so happy that we can you know join in on like our common love which is reading and books and so that's all that I have for you guys today thank you so much for joining me and I will see you guys in my next video right bye <laughs> Thank you.